name is Dan Tudge. I'm the president of Enspace and the director of Sword Coast Legends. Enspace is a video game developer that's been around for over 20 years. We're located in Orlando, Florida, and have been working for years, uh, years on all kinds of great games, including many RPGs. But this one's the first that we've really done for ourselves and generated ourselves. As, pr as president, I'm, in I'm involved in much of the day-to-day -day operation of the studio, including the strategic direction of where we're going. Um, our CEO, Dan O'Leary, is, uh, is the one that really sets that guidance. Uh, and my job is really to sort of execute on that. Um, but I've, on this project in particular, because I have a very extensive RPG background, um, I'm working directly with the team on directing the product. So Sword Coast Legends is a one to five player D&D RPG that's based in the Forgotten Realms. It includes a very classic experience that follows in the, the, the legacy of all the great D&D titles like Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights, but adds a real-time Dungeon Master uh, component to it as well. So players can create their own modules, their own campaigns uh, with the Dungeon Master tools and then play those in real time with other players. I think it's really nice to see an isometric game, you know, a top-down isometric game that really uses 3D and, and being able to use 3D as opposed to the old painted backgrounds that we had allows things like being able to rotate around in the world and allows us to randomize all the pieces that build the dungeon so no two games will ever feel alike, you know, and, and then we can actually randomize the interiors of those dungeons as well too and really create unique experiences for everybody. And that's all because of the power of, of, of 3D and, and the graphics that we've been able to create power. A lot of our team has worked on a lot of RPGs in the past and a lot of great single player RPGs. I was the director of Dragon Age Origins. Um, so for us, working on uh, creating that great story driven experience, that part, um, came from a lot of muscle memory. Um, but when it came to doing something like DM mode, we were all players of the tabletop Dungeons and Dragons and really wanted to create an experience that would translate from that tabletop. And that was really qu quite an effort. Uh, and, and it was very, uh, very difficult to get in a place that was very accessible and very easily picked up by people, um, but still had the depth and complexity that Dungeons and Dragons should have. Anyone that's been a fan of the legacy of the, the classic Western RPGs, like uh, especially the D&D ones like Baldur's Gate or Icewind Dale, I think they'll really feel at home. Uh, the game feels very familiar to that. Dra the original Dragon Age Origins obviously had a lot of roots um, in that, so they'll feel at home there. But I think players that play on the tabletop as well, that, that play with others, uh, and enjoy playing games with, with other people and, and friends will really enjoy it as well too. So uh, not just from the Dungeon Master side, but also playing cooperative with the other players. We've done a lot of, of testing with groups of people that really don't play a lot of video games. They may play a bit of tabletop. And one thing I think I'm surprised by every time is how, um, how quickly they get into it. It usually starts with somebody saying, well, I'll just play as the player. I don't, I don't want to play as a DM right now or whatever. And then they watch the DM on the screen and then they're like, hey, can I try as a, because it is easy to play and we very much focused on that, that, that real time aspect and the fun of rolling for the monsters and playing the monsters and then really scratches that itch for them and it is very accessible and I find that um, very early on people realize that it is about all playing together and that can actually be a lot of fun. The connection to the consumer uh, in the video game industry for developers um, is really, has really changed the landscape for a lot of developers. I mean for us it was the old publisher model, we worked for years. You know, publishers would get a license or they'd get an idea and then they'd work with you and you would do that project for them. And the developer never really worked with the, um, with the, with the fans directly. Some developers did, but a lot of develop developers didn't have that opportunity. But now we can connect directly with the consumer with the, with the advent of digital and direct to consumer distribution. So now you're getting to see a lot of smaller studios start making the games that they've always wanted to make. The, one, you know, the games that the fans have always been crying for that may have not fit within a big publisher portfolio, but games like this that we're making that I know fans would love to play and we can connect directly with them on that. Honestly, the most successful game is the ones that people enjoy. I mean, I mean it's really about having fun. I mean, we weave a lot of social issues and things like that into games, but if you're not having fun while you're doing that and you're not enjoying it, it's, it's not a game. Uh, and, and so, if I see people playing our game and they're loving it and they're having a great time, you know, they're creating content, sharing that content with other people, then I feel really, I feel that I've really made an impact on their lives and, and in a good way and really done something great. There's a, such a, a huge amount of games to pick from. Um, dig, dig and look and there's always these, there's great games and often made by small independents. 
um, that are awesome. They're even better than, than a lot of the big budget games. And keep looking at those, and, uh, and I think you're going to find some gems.